Constable Hunter. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give at this inquest will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. On the day in question, sir, I was called to Swang Farm following an occurrence on the moor. I found the boy Keith Hesseltine. In the weeks since David had vanished, I had begun to feel as if something was working into my mind from outside, trying to turn my thoughts towards something in a way that was not kindly. Then the candle began to call temptation. I obeyed it almost without thinking. It was something I had to do and the desire to do it came on me like a storm. When did you last see your son? At lunchtime on the day in question. And had there been any problems at home recently? Any disagreements between you? No, sir. I felt that the candle flame was, at the very least, unlucky. David had looked at it, and afterwards, he had seemed to see things differently. It had had an effect that was not good. As I gazed into the flame, I seemed to see movement in it. The world's light grew less and the flame whiter until I seemed to be looking into a cave of light. Suddenly, I knew I didn't want to see any more. The uh, next witness prefers not to give his name, sir. Now then, mister, uh, what would you like to tell me? I was on the moor that afternoon, sir. I was stealing turf from my garden, and well, well, I know I could get charged, sir, for stealing, but I, I don't want my name in the paper. I'm told the police will not be taking any action against you as a result of your statement, and indeed, I commend your public spirit in coming forward. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, would you like to carry on with your evidence? Well, like I say, sir, I was on the moor that day, and when I saw the two lads coming towards me, I, I like, lay low for a bit, you know, watching them. And I saw the lightning strike. And did you see anything else? Well, just before the lightning, something seemed to come flying out of the sky. And the other boy, uh, not the one that's here today, he held his hands up and he spoke. But I didn't hear what he said. I see. And what came flying down out of the sky, do you know? Well, it, it was like a man on horseback, sir. But, but not flying so much as uh, galloping. Keith, Peter, Nesseltine. I told them what I could. The facts. And at the end, it was suddenly as if something was over and done with. I come to the last page of a book. Life was now another book, a fresh one. But whether it would have a happy ending or not, I couldn't tell. Good of you to come back, Keith. I hope your parents don't mind. Yeah, they understand. Well, I'm glad that's all over. Still, there has to be something public when there's no... no funeral. I'm thinking of going away, Keith. How long for? Forever. Australia, maybe. 
It's 20 years before I retire. That's a long time. We're looking at the same landscape. Remembering. Aye. It's 50 years till I retire. Maybe you want to leave too. No. I'll stay. You don't think he's dead, do you? No. I don't. I think. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say it. No, go on. I think he's got into, well, some other time. And he's trapped there somehow. There's lots of stories about people waking up after hundreds of years. Maybe those things are true. But people pretend there were stories to try and explain something like this. I mean, if David just came walking back, one day, we weren't here. Huh? Yeah, well, just be careful, Keith. Don't you go getting lost trying to find him. funeral for him, not a priest, not out. They never found him. Under the hill with all his knights, sleeping and waiting. King Arthur, King Arthur. Now at last, I knew there was a reason why the candle called as it did. What the reason was, or how I would find out, I couldn't tell. But at last, I was ready to look into the flame, to see what was there, and what had taken.